Good morning. It is such a great day to have synchronicity. I am so excited that you made the space to join me today. Today we have Joyce, CEO of Living Narc Free, who is joining us on the couch to talk about her programs and services and to give us some in information on narcissistic abuse. I am so excited to speak with you today, Joyce. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I am good. Thank you, Shakira. It's definitely a pleasure. And I look forward to just sharing as much as possible to help anyone that needs to hear the information. So, but thank you for having me on. <laughs> yes, thank you for coming. Yes. I'm always, ex I don't know if excited is the right word, but I am always looking forward to jumping into talking about narcissism, right? Yes. Um, because when you go on social media, me as a therapist, I'm always talking to someone who is saying that they have been exposed to narcissistic abuse. So mm -hmm. anytime I can get some information to bring clarity as to exactly what that is, what that looks like, and how to um, heal after mm -hmm. that, I'm always jumping for the opportunity. So thank you so much for being here and for sharing yes. um, the, 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 the important information um, on this disorder. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's definitely something it's it's tough to heal from. But, you know, with the right tools, the right resources, um, anybody can heal from it. But it, they have to want to heal. They have to want know. to heal. They, they have, have to want to. <laughs> So let's Absolutely. jump in. So tell us, Joy, all about Living Narc Free LLC. Yeah, so um, Live Narc Free was basically, you know, it was pretty much an organization slash company that I uh, decided to start um, due to my own personal experiences dealing with narcissists. So I had an aunt that I lived with for five years who was a narcissist. And um, while living with my aunt in that period of time, I started dating a male narc. Um, I started dating him for four years. And also um, on my journey, I started talking to um, a gentleman that was a borderline, um, which is pretty much a person that has unstable moods, unstable behaviors and unstable relationships. So due to, you know, the traumatization and really the humiliation and just feeling lonely, lost, sad, disappointed, I didn't really know who to go to or who to turn to. And I felt like I needed an outlet, you know? And so um, I started making videos on my YouTube channel and a lot of people appreciate it. They um, love the fact that I opened up because I'd never done that before in my life. Yeah. And so that's kind of like where it all started. So, yeah. Yes. Joy, wow. How yes. <laughs> you with the eye who was not. Yes, ma'am. Then you started dating a male. Yes. Who who was on the spectrum as well. Yes. And then started dating someone else who was a borderline. Yes. What is going on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I, I never knew that that was such a thing. I, I mean, I guess, you know, now I'm like, okay, God, I see what you was doing, but I think I needed to go through those lessons in order for me, for one, to open myself up to the world and to know like, hey, everybody is not nice and everybody is not kind like yourself. You know, it's like, yeah. there's people out there that are evil, people out there that have personality disorders, people that, you know, may be unstable in their way of relating to you, you know, in a, a situation. And so, you know, I do feel like it happened for me it mm. wasn't easy and it was definitely painful and disappointing yeah. to experience especially from at least the family side of it you know they say family is bond you know family over everything you know i have a different perspective unfortunately mm. um you know and so but i, I think the reason why I did attract those relationships was due to the environment in which I was growing up in dealing with my aunt. I think I felt as if that was a normal thing. I was used to it. I was comfortable, you know, with it. And so I think that's kind of what led to the cycle of narcissist borderline. But thank God after 2016, I cut that off and it's like no more, you know, so. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> How did you heal from that joy? How did I heal? Um, yeah, it's a beautiful question. So I did so much inner work mm. here. Like I did so much inner work, so much inner healing. So I had to start educating myself on narcissism. I had to start reading many, many, many books. Um, I had to um, grieve, of course. I had to grieve. I had to cry. I had to feel sad. I had to feel angry and bitterness and resentment. But eventually I had to let it go. 
you know um i had to understand what was triggering for me was it codependency was it loneliness was it low self-esteem or low self-confidence and abandonment issues rejection issues you know all of that uh different emotional wounds and uh, different attachments to whether it was my mom or my dad or other previous experiences you know and i also had to find um outlets for myself to kind of you know cope throughout the day so whether it's journaling doing yoga, meditation, you know, finding other creative things for me to do to build up my self-esteem and build up my confidence. Cause once you, when you deal with a narcissist, I don't know if you ever dealt with one or not Shakira, but they will try to break you, like literally break your spirit, break mm. your soul. And it's, it's horrific. You know, I don't wish that on anybody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, so, I'm <laughs> you know, and so um, I'm just glad that God really blessed me to be able to overcome it, you know, because I'm unfortunately there are people that don't make it, you know, and that's a sad, it's a reality for some. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that was the other thing that helped me to heal. I started getting closer to God. Thank you for him so much. I love him. Oh. <laughs> but, you know, when I started building my relationship with God, God allowed me to see things about myself, things about other people. But once I built that relationship, I was like, OK, God, you was doing that for me. There was a lesson that I need to learn. So now I'm going to make sure I'm staying close to you. So that way you can bring the right people into my life, whether it's relationships, friendships, business partners, associates and et cetera. Um, I'm trying to see what else did I do. Um, I spent time with um, the people that I loved and I knew cared about me and trusted me, mm -hmm. right? So, um, you know, I was able to go and hang out with some of my friends and just kind of talk to them as well. I did also do um, a counseling. I did a counseling um, session for a year, which was great. Mm -hmm. It was another good outlet for me. Um, so that was many of the ways that I was able to heal and recover and yeah. move past it but it was rough i'm not gonna lie it was mm -hmm. rough and it was painful so mm -hmm. but out of yeah. that pain look what was born you have <laughs> yeah an organization and you are helping other survivors to find their voice and to find their purpose and to fall in love with themselves right yes, so that's absolutely. amazing i'm so happy so so happy that you are <laughs> thank so, you i appreciate it <laughs> joy tell us a little bit about how a person can spot a narcissist in their life? What should they be looking for? Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the things you want to look for is that, you know, this person could play the victim a lot. You know, they may try to twist and uh, flip things um, often. Um, they have um, sort of a fake persona for the most part. Um, you know, they also have a sense of entitlement as well. Um, you know, they could perhaps blame you for a lot of things without taking responsibility or accountability for their actions, you know, so they don't give you closure. They don't admit to their wrongdoings. You know what I'm saying? And they kind of just blame you. You're like, no, it's your fault. You know what I'm saying? Without saying like, oh no, like that was wrong for me. Like I won't do it again. Or I understand if you want to move on because I treated you this way, you know what I'm saying? And they also are very, very controlling, mm -hmm. very, very manipulative, unfortunately. Um, they can be very deceptive in their um, behavior in the way that which they interact with you. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, they they will hurt you at their own expense for personal gain. And so in a sense, they'll exploit you. You know, mm -hmm. they'll exploit you just so they can be like, oh, well, I have this now or I have that now. And they may not even care that if they hurt your feelings or that it affected you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they do have a they don't like to attach like it's hard for them to get too close to people because they know who they are deep down inside. And then if you see that, if you're aware, then they're going to be like, oh, they're going to leave me. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's hard for them to get attached to people. A lot of times um, a lot of them, um, they have chronic uh, feelings of like boredomness and loneliness and emptiness just due to the fact that they're not able to have long lasting, fulfilling relationships like like our, us normal people, we are able to do that, you know? And so that what they will also do is they'll make you question yourself, second guess yourself, like doubt your reality or make it seem like you're crazy. You know, like I said, flip things on to yourself, you know? And then the last thing is that I find quite interesting because I feel like all humans want this, but just the way that the narcissist is, is very like overt and um, excessive. So they need constant praise, constant, like over the top praise. They need constant attention. They need constant admiration. Like I said, I understand normal people want this, but they don't need it excessively, like 24 yeah. seven, 365, like, you know, so that's basically what it means to be a narcissist. Yes, really good. You said that. <laughs> Um, one yeah. of the things that a narcissist will do is exploit you. 
Yes, Could yes. An example, what would that look like? So exploiting a person, whether it's for finances or sex or whatever type of thing that the narcissist may want from you, um, you know, it could be shelter, whatever, just it could be your energy. They may exploit like the fact that you maybe you listen to them and they drain you. They suck the life out of you. You know what I'm saying? And so you feel tired, you feel fatigued or, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, yeah. or they could like exploit you in a way where it's like they use you for to have a kid or use you for a marriage in some way. You know what I'm saying? So they're like kind of taking advantage of you, exploiting you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's it's unfortunate, but it, I, I guess over the years it's become common, unfortunately, Mm -hmm. You know, um, yeah, it, it's an interesting world out there for sure. <laughs> yeah, interesting personalities, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So based off of what you've seen, Joy, how do you think that the trauma um, from narcissistic abuse can affect the person? So the person that's been exposed to it, how does mm -hmm. that affect them? Yeah, I mean, I, and I can speak for myself or just generally speaking, but I mean, it makes you have low self-esteem. It makes you have low self-worth. It makes you feel like, you know, you want to isolate from people. Like, you don't want to trust anybody. You don't even trust yourself. You know what I'm saying? And you just feel lonely. You feel frightened. You feel fearful of the future. You feel like there may not even be a future. You could feel, feel the point where you're going to be alone forever. You may have those thoughts and those fears come up for you. And you almost could feel haunted. You really could, you know? And, um... You make you feel sadness, regret, and make you just very disappointed, very yeah. disappointed. And also, too, the fact that, you know, you may experience like CPTSD or you may have trauma bonds with this narcissist or cognitive dissonance. You know what I'm saying? Just things that kind of stick with you and stay with you. They never leave, but you only had it because you were dealing with the narcissist or because you experienced narcissistic abuse. Because one of the things that a lot of people have to remember is that a narcissist is not just with a dating partner. It's also could be like with a parent or like a, a in-law or like a sibling or, you know, an associate and stuff like that, or a boss. So. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. Good stuff. Yes. And so what joy do you think, um, or what would you say a potential client could expect um, mm -hmm. if they decide you know what? This is bowling up my alley. I have been exposed to narcissism. I don't know how to heal. My world mm -hmm. is turned upside down. I don't trust myself. All of the domains that you just listed. Mm -hmm. And they say that I want a narcissistic abuse coach. What should they expect? What could they expect? So, you know, they could expect, you know, just mentorship. Um, they could expect support. They can expect guidance, um, counseling, um, practical tips, strategies, and techniques to help them to be able to cope to help them to move on, to help them to heal, um, to help them to gain awareness and understanding of like what has happened, what are my challenges, what are my trials, what are my tribulations and my obstacles that's keeping me stuck in the way that I feel how I feel. But then when you, you know, have somebody that you're talking to or a narcissist abuse coach like myself will have a, a plan, a map on how you can counteract, you know, those thoughts and those feelings that you may have about yourself. So that way you can go back out there in the world and, you know, be your normal self again, be happy, be whole and complete. Because the thing is, I guess in a sense, it's a, a, a curse or maybe it's a blessing in disguise. Because when you deal with the narcissist, you become broken. But mm. then after the fact, you separate yourself. But you have to really mean it because some people may dibble and dab and go back and forth. Because And I know because that was me. But once you say, OK, I'm done, I deserve better, then you can begin to live your life again. In a sense, reclaim your life back and just you know, move on to better, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, they, they can expect self, um, self study guides and just really the point is I, like when I, even like my own clients, I like to make them become self-reliant. I want them to be independent instead, instead of being codependent. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I want them to be able to think for themselves, to do for themselves, to live life again, have that identity self, you know, self-esteem and the sense of self, because that's what the narcissist robs us of. They don't want us to be our own individual. They don't want us to have our own mind. Like they like it like, oh, when we rely on them for every little thing, even making little small decisions, just sometimes we may have to look at the narcissist like, oh, can I do that? And it's like, we never did that before. You know what I'm saying? But due to the fact of the manipulation and the control tactics and 
you know, being deceptive and trying to um, influence us to do certain stuff beyond our will, you know, we behave in that way. But what I like to do is like, no, be yourself, be who you are, be self-reliant, you know, and even if you got to be by yourself for a while, that's good because you get to spend time knowing yourself, you get to know God. And then once you have that relationship with God, you can say, hey, God, bring the right people into my life. Bring my my real partner that's meant for me. Bring them in, him or her into my life because mm -hmm. narcissists could be male or female, too. So mm -hmm. just keep that in mind. Yeah, definitely. And now <laughs> you have um, let go of that that bad energy, right? Yes. Now you can make room mm -hmm. for who supposed to be there. Um, yes, ma'am. So beautiful. <laughs> Joy, yes. I just have to say, you have such a spirit of peace and freedom. Oh, thank you. Right? I just feel good talking to you. Good, you just good. really good spirit. So, good. Um, I'm happy to hear that. that. You know that. Yes. Okay. So getting back, you have a book. Yes, I do. <laughs> Tell us about your book. It's called Reclaim Your Life Back, My Journey into Understanding Narcissism. Tell us all about it. Yeah. So it's so crazy because I remember like I was telling some experiences to my dad and my dad was just hearing me out. He's like, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. You know, just listening to me. And he was like, Joy, he's like, you should write a book. I was like, I should, should I? <laughs> and so we just kind of like, you know, was laughing around, but I don't think he thought that I was serious. Like I was really going to write it, but I don't know what it was. I don't know if God was speaking to me, kind of nudging me and like, okay, I put you through this stuff so you can share with other people. Like, come on now, get writing, you know? <laughs> And so um, I finally just said to myself, you know what, let me just go ahead and write this book. And I'm so glad that I did because it's been helping a lot of people that have purchased it. And you're more than welcome to get a copy too, if you like. After yeah. this. Um, <laughs> and so, um, yeah, it's just really, I mean, I feel that everything that I went through, again, it was for a reason. Like my pain did not, it was like, it wasn't in vain. Like it was for a purpose. But in regards to reclaiming your life back, I just felt like that's literally what I did. I reclaimed my life back from the abuse, from the narcissist, from the manipulation, from the trickery, from the deception. You know, it wasn't easy because I was attached, you know, whether that was with my aunt, the male narc, the borderline, I was emotionally attached in love with the partners, you know? And um, yeah, I just, I said, if I can help somebody by sharing my story, you know, um, then let me write this and I would feel good because I know that it's helping somebody else. But it also helps me too to know that, you know, somebody else can benefit from what I went through. So, yes, that's why I, I wrote it. <laughs> so in love with it. And definitely, you know, I need that copy. Yes, definitely. You can either do it's a, um, I think it's an ebook or paperback. I recommend the paperback so, you know, you can kind of, you know, have the little souvenir. But yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. Definitely. That will be perfect. <laughs> the summer reading list yes yes <laughs> Joy, tell us a little bit about um spiritual teaching right what is a spiritual yes. teacher and why is this important so for me i i feel like a spiritual teacher is basically you know a person that is connected to god of course mm -hmm. um that teaches others about god or you know other spirituality practices and um maybe not necessarily rituals, but just a way of, you know, behaving and being as a um, spiritual being. Cause I, I have this thing where I, this is just my belief, but I think we're spiritual beings having a human experience. So like, you know, the flesh, our body, everything, our personality, even our names, I don't think that's who we really are at the end of the day. I feel like we are a spirit living in this body. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, when we transition and I always say, God, thank you for giving me 97, 114 years to live. I'm just saying, because we're all <laughs> going to die one day. <laughs> but, you know, I just say, OK, God, I know I'm going to die, but I just want my life to be beneficial. Like when people look at the obituary that I'll have or the, what, I think that's what they call it. Anyway, when they look at it and they they look like, OK, Joy is long gone. I want them to be like, oh, wow, like she did this or she did that or she helped people do this or you know what i'm saying not saying i'm looking for accolades but i just want my life to have value i want my life to have meaning and i just feel like that's what i teach people about and i, I feel like it's a spiritual thing you know what i'm saying and i'm not necessarily religious because i i grew up in a christian background going to church and stuff and i'd be open to going to church even now but I'm not really connected to church how I used to be, but I'm more, I'm a spiritual person and I, I love God. I have a beautiful relationship with God. And I just teach people about, you know, just connecting with God, loving him, trusting him, you know, knowing that God is your protector, your provider, your 
defender, like he's everything. And he wants us to depend on him. And I, I feel like that's how I live. So I'm like, I'm going through the experience. So I'm teaching people how to go down that path too. So that's how I feel like that's how I'm a spiritual teacher. So yes, I love so, you yeah. down my alley. You know, spiritual <laughs> because that is my philosophy that we are spiritual beings and we are having a human experience, right? And yes. that we are so powerful that we attract these experiences to us. It all begins with how you think and what you think you are worth. So I tell mm -hmm. my clients a lot of times, you know, when they're sitting with me and they are crying the blues, I say, what do you think about yourself, right? Tell me about your relationship with self because everything around you is a reflection and a projection of what you think about you. That's how powerful we are. We are mm -hmm. all spiritual beings that is connected to one spiritual source. And when you think about that, it just blows your mind completely. Um, and it minimizes a lot of the, the, the things that we go through, knowing that I'm connected to something so much bigger than this. Right. Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, and so that is why <laughs> I feel connected with you. Because you are a part of my tribe. We, you are talking about definitely. Like, yes. yes. Definitely. Definitely. Okay, that was so good, Joy. Thank you. How was your yes. wellness? Yes, yeah, so I was actually thinking about that too. Like wellness, um, I would just say, you know, really just having good health, mm -hmm. you know, and not just like physically, but like mentally, spiritually, um, psychologically, yeah. you know, um, you know, and being able to have, you know, those um physical habits and the mental habits, mental health habits, so that way, you know, you can be a better person or just physically, like I said, mentally, and in a sense, it's where like you're not just surviving every day, but you're thriving, whether, mm -hmm. like I said, that's within your mind or if that's a physical part mm -hmm. or if it's a spiritual part. That's that's what I would say wellness is like being able to take care of yourself, essentially. Mm -hmm. Wellness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's that. And, you know, if you were to give somebody some coping strategies um, on how they can heal from narcissistic abuse, what are three that you would give? Three? Um, I would say like my top three is definitely um, get like a counselor. Um, or like somebody that maybe has dealt with narcissistic abuse, I would highly recommend talking to them for like maybe a year or two or however long that person needs to, you know, talk and um, work things out, you know. Um, I also would recommend maybe even joining like a support group, you know. I actually do have a free Facebook support group, so anybody watching, you're more than welcome to yeah. join. <laughs> so, um, but no, um, so having a support group and maybe another one could be, um, maybe like grieving. I, and I know that doesn't sound so nice, you know, nobody really wants to grieve, but I don't know. I feel like in order to get through whatever pain, um, or struggles or whatever it is that you're feeling, the hurt, the sadness, you got to feel it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? In order to, I, what does that say? In order to heal, you have to feel. I think I heard that from somebody's, I don't yeah. know if it was a podcast or something, but yeah. I think well, that's really, really, yeah. what <laughs> In order to heal, you have to feel. You got right? to. Right. You right. really right. have right. to. Right. Yeah. And honestly, Shakira, I could tell you, like, I wasn't afraid of feeling my feelings, but it was just, it was just frightening, period. Like, just allowing myself to just sit with myself and cry. You know, or if it was if I was angry, like scream, like obviously nobody else in the house, of course. But, you know, if I'm like in the car or if I'm in, I'm in the shower, you know, I'm, I'm by myself, just allowing myself to just express how I feel, because I, I feel like a lot of suffering comes from people don't allow themselves that time to feel how they feel, you know. And then I think they go out in the world and like even though they're feeling depressed, they have they're stressed out. Or they have anxiety, but they had to put a smile on their face as if they're really happy, but they're not. Yeah. You know, so it's like, you know, you are like, it's like you're killing yourself slowly on the inside. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, no, like feel that. Mm -hmm. And I guess in a sense, I would recommend, especially if you are uncomfortable with feeling your feelings, feel it with like, again, a counselor or a coach or somebody that you trust, somebody that's not going to judge you or criticize you or belittle, belittle you because that was a big thing for me. Um, the person that I talked to for the year 
she, due to the fact that she didn't experience narcissistic abuse, mm -hmm. she wasn't able to, like, she heard me, but I just didn't feel like she felt me, you know what I'm saying? And that's kind of a, a different thing, you know? I felt like she was just looking at me like, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I was just kind of like, where's the empathy? Where's yeah. the sympathy? You know what I'm saying? And so, um, I just, I didn't get that, but like I said, the good thing about YouTube and social media, and I just had to say, I give up my pride. I give up my ego. I'm not here to impress anybody. I just want to, if whatever I share, if it helps you, then that helps me too. So, yes. Ah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. piggybacking off of that a little bit, Joy, what stress reduction techniques do you currently utilize? Oh, that's beautiful. I haven't done this in a while, but usually, and I'm going to get back to it very, very soon. Um, But yoga, mm. yoga, 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 yoga. I love yoga. I love yeah. yoga. <laughs> but um, yoga meditation, mm. I highly, highly, highly recommend. Um, journaling, as I mentioned earlier. Um, any Anything to do with like your breath, like breathing works. So inhaling mm. and holding it. <laughs> exhaling it just let it come out you know what i'm saying just having that real deep breath like what in yoga they call it it's the belly belly breath or something like that where you like breathe from like your um adamant or whatever they call it down here mm -hmm. instead of breathing like from your um your chest. Like your chest yeah and so just having different breath works and um you know really practicing self-care self-care yeah. you know whether that's you know taking a nice bath or pampering yourself or like getting your nails done your hair done or you know cooking yourself a nice meal or taking yourself out to dinner or buy yourself some flowers or you know just really like you have to learn how to love on yourself because mm -hmm. I remember many years ago Shakira like I didn't love myself yeah. I did not and I could admit that I did not I, I didn't like myself I didn't love myself and I think it was due to like what I had went through as a child and even like you know dealing with narcissistic abuse and I was just like, well, if people that I thought loved me, even family members could treat me this way, well, why would anybody else want to treat me any other way? You know what I'm saying? But thank God, God was there with me. <laughs> and this is the end of this story. Yes, I with love God, it. he helped me to see that it was not about that. Like, you know, just because somebody mistreats you, that you don't have to take that on. You don't have to internalize that and make that define who you are at the end of the day you know what i'm saying and so when i started to rebuild my my relationship with god god helped me to love my well i had to like myself first before i got to the love part <laughs> but then once so i liked myself and then that was by me spending time with myself getting to know joy like what is joy like what does joy dislike what what makes joy happy what makes joy sad what makes joy whatever, whatever the emotion that I wanted to feel, I need, I had to learn that about myself. And then once I started learning that stuff, then I slowly but surely started to love myself, mm -hmm. you know? And then also I would give a shout out to my um, friend. Her name is Kristen. She is such a sweet girl. Um, but what I loved about her is that she was just so confident, like, like just her aura. She was just like, she didn't really care. Like she was super detached about things going around, but she was still, you know, she was living her life and doing what she needed to do. But me spending time with her, it just helped me to realize like, it's okay. Like, I don't have to let stuff bother me. Like if somebody says something or does something, it's not a big deal. It's like, okay, that, that person doesn't really know me like that. So it is what it is. You just brush it off your shoulder. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, like being around her, it really helped as far as like with the stress reduction and um, also just, you know, maybe watching a, a good funny movie or something, laugh, you know, just have a laugh. You know, um, unfortunately, the way that the world is, it's so serious and hard and like, oh, you got to be rough. <laughs> it's just like, no, you don't have to be that all the time. You know, just be light, be easy. You know what I'm saying? And so that's that's kind of like what I recommend as far as stress reduction. And um, yeah, that's basically what I would say. I love it. Really good. <laughs> Thank you. A good laugh. I yes, have a good laugh. Um, in the session, we have a heavy session. I'm like, all right, then go watch Friends or Seinfeld. And, like, <laughs> watch Friends or Seinfeld. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have a laugh, right? Um, so just, yeah. you know, not taking yourself so seriously. Oh, um, and listening to music. Sorry, but yeah. That's oh another one. Listen that's to music. Thing. Yeah. That is my thing. Yes. Yeah. Um, shout out to Erica Badu. If you are watching, I love you to death and you get me from everything. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so joy this has been amazing what else yes. would you like to share with us what else um have you not had the opportunity to talk about yet that you want to make sure that um you pinpoint now is the time share it yes definitely so i just want to say it was definitely a pleasure to be on the show and i really hope that you know it can help and bless someone that's dealing with narcissistic abuse mm -hmm. um but yeah if anybody would like to reach out to me for a session um you're more than welcome to do so um you know, I would love to support you in any way that I can. I just want to know, like, don't feel afraid to ask for help because I know that was a big thing for me. Like I said, it was an ego and a pride thing. Um, you know, and remember, you're not alone. You know, there's other people that have dealt with this. <laughs> you know, that helped me too, you know. Um, and I'm pretty sure there's going to be many people after me as well that's dealing with it, you know. So that's where I come in. But um, yeah, please feel free to reach out to me. And again, um, please don't hesitate to get a copy of, you know, Reclaim Your Life Pack. It is pretty much essentially a self-study guide to help victims and survivors move on, heal, recover after dealing with the abuse. And also for this month, I'm not sure when you guys are going to see this, but I do right now. If you're listening, I will I will validate the offer for you because you tuned in. But I do have a buy one, get one offer. So if you purchase, whether if it's a session from me, a book or a course or unbiased advice um, service, you will automatically get a free option for whatever product or service that you get. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. Just, you know, it is my, show my appreciation to the people that um, follow my page, subscribe to my channel and stuff like that. And then also, um, cause it's kind of late, but if you, again, if you do watch it, I do have a Mother's Day special holiday package deal going on with all of the products and services that I offer again to former victims and survivors, again, to help them to heal, self-discover, self-help themselves. You know, especially mothers, we're always so busy helping other people, which that's technically, you know, our job. We do that. We nurture, we protect, we support. But what about us? What about us? What about, you know, just saying like, let me just have a day to myself. Let me buy something for myself. Let me tend to myself just for like an hour, two hours or a day or something, you yes. know? Yeah. So I do have that holiday package deal available. Um, should be linked below. Uh, Shakira will share it with you all. Um, but yeah, please don't hesitate to reach out again. I do have a free Facebook support group. So you guys are more than welcome to join. Um, we do have other former victims and survivors in the group. Uh, we don't judge you. We don't criticize you. We just want to be there to, to love on you, support you and be of, um, of service, you know? So, but yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> Joy, this has been amazing. <laughs> your energy. Thank you. Thank you, you so much. Your energy that just vibrates through. So thank you for taking thank some you. time to spend time with us this morning. I'll make sure that all of the links and everything that you discussed today and all the promos um, will be attached under your interview. Until yes. next time, yes. my, goal for you, my goal for you is to you to be brave. Yes be magical and above <laughs> all else be well enjoy your day thank yes. you yes